Hello everyone and welcome, my name is Vincent and this is the second part of the previous PaperSim tutorial. In this video we will watch how to animate a camera in Cinema 4D. And originally this video was recorded on Patreon in 2023, but I want to share this with you on YouTube so everyone can watch it for free. So let's get started. There's number one, the camera animation here. So I'm merging the two shots together, like the first one and the second one with a bit of a camera motion. So still quite some things on the list. Let's try to wrap it up. And by the way, I also rendered the other one, which finally did simulate because it had the same bug. After switching the tag, it was all going well. And this was my animation here. And I like it because it reminds me like going back to your childhood where you had this Hoopa booba bubble gum thingy stripes and yeah there are a lot of chewing gums. Nice. So let's have a look onto Cinema 4D. And that was the scene here. Playback doesn't work because of the thickness, which somehow makes it really incredible slow. So quickly select all your thicknesses. Well I think you have to do like this. It's a bit tedious, but now everything is off. Now we can focus on the camera animation. And let's press play to see what we got. We have 50 frames, that's good, that is real time. So we can really judge how the camera is looking. And to merge my two shots, I used the stage object, which unfortunately doesn't work with Redshift right now. So if you put this in the render queue, it will only render one part, but I said this in the previous video, I think. But for now, this really helps us to visualize these two cameras, how they are matching together. Then I'll try to quickly replicate all the things so camera and let's have a look onto the wretch of camera i think that this one wretch of camera here is the wretch of camera that was just a tag let's turn off the stage object because otherwise it won't work and now this camera has already the same setting as the previous one and i wanted something i don't know pretty long lens but not ultra long lens i had 172 um focal length then my cutting point was around 140 so let's start to animate a little bit so let's say that's already a pretty good starting frame. Let's set the keyframes on all of these guys. Then I want to set a keyframe in the middle and let's just move only very little or actually perhaps something like that. Then at the end, I really want to move more out and I don't know, already start to move the camera a little bit in the direction from the second shot, the second camera. I'm starting with these three keyframes now and I'm sure it will look very bad. That's how it's looking so far and we need to open up our F-curves for the camera. So let's select the camera which we just worked on. Perhaps give ourselves a bit more room, scale this up. Now we need to select all our keyframes and make them easy ease. But I don't want to ease in and I explained this a couple of times that feels very beginner like. So we don't want to start with a eased in action. We want to directly have a constant motion and then at some point we want to start to animate towards the end. But let's say mm, we will give ourselves a few more keyframes somewhere around here. And now we need to select the bottom ones and press them east again. Let's focus on the keyframe at the end because I want the keyframe to be really speeding up and taking up momentum at the end that we have a really good cut momentum and cut energy towards the next shot. And therefore I'm just adjusting a few of my curves here or we can change these ones and I have two more left here. I'm moving this one up and the blue one needs also to go up. And as the next thing, we can select the second last keyframe. And now I'm pressing shift. So I can only move the right handles. And if I'm pressing control or command on the Mac, I think. Now the handlebar is locked and we just move it a little bit to the right. So we accelerate even more towards the end. And you can see we have a little bit of a camera motion. And we had a little like a wiggle in the middle, which I think is nice. Some tiny details making it a little bit more organic. But... The end is too little and I think these two keyframes are too close. So let's move these keyframes a little bit more to the right and also ease it a bit more. Going now to the last frame, I think we should like, I don't know, move the camera a little bit more. Now we need to move on the Z axis as well a little bit and on the red one. Wait, but not sure if I'm moving in the right direction now. I think the camera tilt pan was not the right thing there. Yeah, but we can even move the green one higher. So now I think we have a lot of motion and perhaps this was even too much. And let's see from frame zero again. And that looks awful. And that's 
Perhaps because our keyframes are not in sync. We have this problem a lot if you animate the mo the um, the motion like the coordinates X, Y, Z. And in addition to that, if you animate the spinning and the H, B, and P as well. Yeah, it's really hard to nail that. I would say for now, let's get rid of these keyframes again. Redo this. So somewhere around 140. We want to move out, up. Position a bit more like this, give it the keyframes again, and perhaps these ones can go a little bit more to the right. And now we need to do the same thing again so that we have accelerating keyframes at the end. And let's hope that we are not overdoing it this time and that the animation looks nicer at the end. Let's see, going back to frame zero, and we have a little bit of camera motion, like a little bit of wiggle there. And yeah, this could work. Um, perhaps at the end. There was just one, like the camera's first tilting to the left and then we're snapping. That's, I have the feeling that we are a bit too much on the left area on this keyframe. So perhaps we have too much on the, on the green. We made this one too strong. We roughly have to try to hit the same curve angle on all our uh, splines here so that we don't get this weird jumping effect. And let's see how it looks now. And I think that could work. And now it looks obviously weird because we are cutting to a, to zero, to a nothing motion. And therefore, let's create our stage object. And this one is called stage two. So just to replicate and redo everything. And then this is the intro camera, which is visible till the frame 140. Put the camera in there to the keyframe. Now I am creating a second camera, which is my end camera or I just use this camera and see how it looks if we go one frame further so till frame 140 is my first camera and then we switch to the second camera and let's set a keyframe on this and you can see that my camera also has like a little bit of something happening we need to adjust the keyframes they need to move a little bit to the left because i had my cut point like two frames earlier let's see how that looks so i like that we have a little bit of an organic motion going on with our cameras here that makes the, the whole scene feel more natural and like nicer but the cut doesn't work very well we're moving the camera to the left and then we have a sort of a weird cut and also the two cameras are pretty close i mean the the closer your camera a to compare to the camera B is the worst is the cut. So that means in general for to make it easier for our second camera, we need to move out a little bit. And for the first camera, we need to move in a little bit. So now we are closer here and more and less close on the second one. But overall, that's still way too close. So we could not move this far away. In general, our intro camera needs to be closer in total because we're animating all of the keyframes. That's a little bit difficult to find the right values here so we need to move the camera up. Mm, wait we need to first move on the x axis so let's see if we move the camera just a little bit around here so on blue we have a bit of a wiggle going on i think also this curve is too too much but we definitely need to avoid to the the left motion and, and as said in total we need to try to go closer with the camera so let's arrange some of these keyframes actually like the manipulating these keyframes can definitely take quite a while and it's good that you get used to it play around a little bit try to change and manipulate as much as you want or as you think is good and over time you get a feeling to, I don't know, make it right. But also in general, I think it's it's not so easy. So less, definitely less camera um, tilting and panning, which makes it totally way easier to adjust our final composition and animation. So you can see that we are totally losing our everything, but we are on it. So let's see if we have to move on the green one a little bit. And I want to go more to the left. So in this case, I think left is the blue axis. So let's see on frame zero, way more to the left. Yes, nice, but it's too much of a motion. I think it's a little bit too fast. So try to make the blue one a bit more even. And let's move everything a bit more up, 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 up. Yep, there's a bit of a tilt that's looking nice but definitely the end is very bad 
which keyframes are these? The tilting, let's make it less. This could start to work, but we're trying to sort of get a match cut. So at this frame, we are at the bottom left, but we need this image to be more on that area. So middle right um, to make it more match. And therefore let's again manipulate the camera a little bit. And I have the feeling I'm not doing this good today. <laughs> I hope you are quicker at a point where you are. And also I have the feeling that when I didn't do it without the tutorial, when I just made it by myself, I, I was a bit quicker by reaching the final, final thingy. But let's see if we are somewhere now. So yeah, this could work, but still the camera motion at the end is way too strong. And our second camera has a little bit too to not enough of motion. So let's first of all try to reduce the intensity of the few of the last few frames. We need to soften our curve here and I'm trying to soften everything here. Let's see how that looks for now. And yeah, 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 we are definitely getting better. But as I said, we're trying to do a match cut and now our frame is still a little bit much too much on the left side so it needs to be moving more to the right and uh, let's see how that looks yeah that's pretty good and now we need to have a look onto our first camera so at the end we are moving the camera like from left to right and a bit to the to the side so the second camera also needs to move from left to right so it needs to move from left to the right side and let's see if that already fixed the cut so i increased the strength here yeah but the i don't know it's weird images are too close to each other and also in general i think there's just too much motion happening around the edit and to well help to cut between these two different shots is to Again, make the make them look more different because now they are so close. It doesn't work very well. So let's make our first camera even closer and the end camera even more wide angle. So the contrast is bigger between these two shots. Yeah, it starts to get better. In general, I would fine tune both of the keyframes at the end because if I feel it's still a little bit too much motion. Also, we have motion blur, which is not visible here. And that means that the two shots will blend together way better. And again, let's try to increase the contrast between the close-up and the not close-up shot. So I'm using now 210 millimeters. We're way closer and now we are way more in the uh, frontal shot. And I think it now works way better. So perhaps even make it more the contrast. We are in a close-up where the whole scene is not yet shown and we'll show it in the second shot at um, a wide angle one and yeah i'm happy with the result so far and as a last thing what we could think about as i said i like the taste of this shot being a little bit organic and we can make it even more organic and i was already talking about this to add a track modifier and the track modifier can we can use the noise and let's just start to play around with some values for example, like speed of 25 and a strength of 5. And we can open the strength slider here. And the rotation part really fucks up our position here. So let's put that really down to, I don't know, 3% of rotation. Way too much. So 2% down of rotation. Scale, we, we don't need this at all. The speed could be perhaps faster. So the camera is more jittery. But the strength could be less. Let's try... It's nice. We have a bit of a organic shaky thingy but it's too much so strength one speed 40 percent and let's go back to frame zero yeah that's nice we have a bit of an organic thing going on there and i'm duplicating my tag to the second camera as well and see how that looks there and for the second camera i think it's even still a little bit too much let's put down rotation to one and position to 90 percent this looks quite nice and let's open, let's close our view here and let's make both of our cameras visible so that you can see from the outside how much the track modifier is doing. You can see there's a little bit of wiggling around this camera. It's not much, but it's enough for us to have here this organic feeling. That's part one, talking about the importance of camera and working with track modifiers and with curves. 